Bruce Rosenbaum has been making steampunk attractions with his company Mod Vic. Him and his team of artists and engineers have set up shop right here in Palmer. I sat down with him to talk about how he got here, his creations, and what we have to look forward to in the future. I wanted to know what steampunk is to him. Uh, I'm, I like to put it in kind of simple mathematical terms. Steampunk equals the fusion of history plus art plus technology. I think you need to have those kind of three elements coming together to really make steampunk. Well, steampunk, you know, in terms of its origins, uh, it really comes out of science fiction literature. It was in the 1980s, uh, there was a, and still is, a science fiction author, uh, K.W. Jeter. And uh, in the 80s, it was more kind of like cyberpunk as a genre of science fiction. Uh, cyberpunk is like Terminator, you know, where, uh, what technology is going to be like in the future. And then there were uh, some authors who said, well, let's turn that on its head. What if during the Victorian period or the Industrial Age, they had our modern technology? As if the computer was invented 100 years before it actually was, how that would have changed everything. For me, you know, my kind of uh, intro to steampunk uh, was actually through design. And I didn't even know really what steampunk was at the time when I was doing it because uh, uh, you know, I've always loved uh, architecture and antiques and architectural salvage and design uh, and history. And when we, were, when we moved into our last home, we were kind of like just bringing in antiques, period objects, but instead of having them sit there like they're a museum piece, I wanted to give them new life, new purpose. So I, look, I was kind of looking around the house and I said, well, you know, the home theater is kind of boring, you know, it's kind of boring, you know, pieces, components. Let me dress it up in this really old um, fireplace mantle uh, where the frame uh, where the mirror went was now kind of the TV screen. So I just started to integrate the technology that we had in the house in these objects. And then we had friends coming through say, hey, you're steampunking. It's like, steam what? <laughs> what is that? That sounds weird and wonderful. You know, and I started to research it. And uh, all of a sudden, all my passions just kind of came together with this one word. Wow. And uh, it was really uh, exciting for me because, um, you, know, I was, uh, you know, I was in my 40s. And I said, I, I really want to kind of start to you know uh, make changes to to pursue this because i think i you know i i found my my mojo I then asked about his exhibition in Springfield and how it led him to Hue Machines. I had done a few smaller museums and then I got a call in 2013 from the Springfield Museums in Springfield, Mass, which is right close by. And um, they kind of were thinking maybe of doing a small exhibition, but you know, uh, I love grand plans <laughs> mm -hmm. and kind of wanted to uh, talk to the museum about not just kind of having kind of these random fantastical pieces, but uh, actually using the steampunk as a way to help um, Springfield find its mojo. Wow. And uh, because, you know, steampunk, uh, um, Springfield is a, a post-industrial city, uh, the city of 51st, you know, incredible invention and innovation. And, um, and like a lot of post-industrial cities, they lost their manufacturing base and they were kind of figure out what their next steps were. So, um, so we called it Steampunk Springfield, reimagining an <laughs> industrial city. And we kind of, um, we brought um, steampunk uh, from all regions of the state and, um, and even other parts of the country to uh, uh, create uh, this fusion of history, art, and technology. So one of the uh, parts of this exhibition was called the Hue Machines, which was the signature event. And 
Um, I really thought that, uh, at least, you know, for kids especially, uh, they don't know some of the great visionaries, uh, authors and inventors that changed the world in so many ways. And I said, well, it would be great to bring these authors and inventors back as a way to introduce them or reintroduce them to, to kids and adults too. And uh, so I said, wouldn't it be great, kind of in the steampunk way, to bring back a Victorian uh, industrial age authors and inventors as the machines that they wrote about or created? and kind of uh, d uh, give them a repurposed form using uh, objects in antique, uh, you know, teak pieces that would make up their bodies and make up their, and these, they're kind of like time traveling chrononauts where exactly. they're going from, you know, the, you know, from 100 years ago to our present to basically, you know, help us uh, be uh, better creative problem solvers, uh, better collaborators working in teams and also be more adaptive, uh, be more resilient. And that's, that's kind of the, the three messages I, I like to bring within Steampunk. And so the Hue Machines, um, we have authors like uh, Jules Verne, um, Mary Shelley, H.G. Uh, Wells, and we have inventors like uh, Thomas Blanchard, who invented the duplication lathe. Uh, we have Jan Matsuliger, who invented the, um, the lasting machine, which actually automated the process of sewing your soul to your upper part of your shoe. This was in the late 1800s, which was, um, it's a very intricate process. No one thought you would able, be able to automate it. He did it. It halved the price of shoes and made shoes uh, really affordable for, for most Americans. It really revolutionized the, uh, the industry. Wow. And um, so, so these shoe machines are, are coming back and they're, they're uh, interactive, they move, um, you know, you, you hit a button and they kind of come alive. There's lighting and sound. So I think there's, you know, there's a, a, a lot of excitement. It was one of the best exhibitions that the museum uh, ever had in its long history. Now, um, uh, the first, uh, we're packing up the crates right now mm -hmm. in terms of getting our mm -hmm. Hue machines uh, uh, on the road. And uh, the first place it's going to is the Museum of Idaho, of mm -hmm. all places. Why Palmer? Why Steampunk in Palmer? And where is it all going? Palmer is very uh, special uh, to us. We, uh, uh, we moved from Sharon, Mass. Uh, I grew up in, in Massachusetts. I actually went to school at UMass Amherst. Mm -hmm. So literally, I used to you know, drive down uh, 181 off exit 8 of the pike and we went right by this church and uh, never knowing that, you know, uh, how many years later, 30 years later maybe? <laughs> that I'd be living here, uh, wow. but I've always loved uh, Western Massachusetts. Um, a lot of the artists and craftspeople um, actually live out here. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of my main kind of sources of antiques and objects is Brimfield. Mm -hmm. And Brimfield's the next town over. So it was like kind of this perfect coming together uh, in a timing of, of moving here. My wife and I had wanted to try to find a building. Uh, it could have been a post office, it could have been a bank, uh, but we found this church and uh, it, it's an 1876 Gothic church with beautiful architecture and design. It was in pretty good shape. Uh, we kind of had a, you know, there was, there was asbestos in the building. We had to remove uh, that and uh, had to do some uh, repairs, but it, for the most part, good, it, it good really worked out. Yeah. And um, it's huge, it's 9,000 square feet, and we were able to use the cathedral space really kind of as the gallery, the showroom, mm -hmm. the workshop. It was perfect. Yeah, and then down here is our, our living space, 
and uh, kind of um, inventory and you know, this is kind of where uh, I'm inspired by certain pieces. I would be inspired down here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so and I think yep. part of what I'm trying to do in Palmer, I would love to make, you know, this church the, uh, uh, this, the steampunk capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping to use steampunk in a way to reach out to, to kids, especially from Pal the Palmer High School, from the Pathfinder Vocational School, and really from the region. Um, and uh, I've put together a, uh, a team of people to help build uh, what we're calling SMAC, S-M-A-C. SMAC. SMAC. <laughs> SMAC you over the head. Uh, with, uh, and SMAC stands for Steampunk Makers and Artists Collaborative. Wow. And uh, so create a maker space that is steampunk focused. So um, it's got the welding arts, it's got uh, the electronics arts, you know, robotics. All of this kind of fits really nicely into steampunk, but kind of use the, you know, the repurposing, the adaptive reuse, um, modifying objects kind of as the, you know, the unique part of it. Um, so we're, we're hoping to find a building in Palmer mm -hmm. and create the space here. Uh, but also as part of what we'd like to do is um, actually have a steampunk um, festival or exhibition. I'm thinking Ooh. of calling it, yeah, I'm thinking of calling it the, the Great Steampunk Exhibition, which um, is, is harking back to the, um, to the Great World's Fair uh, exhibitions. Wow. And um, I think primarily it will be about uh, STEM and STEAM. So science, technology, Ooh. engineering, art, and math. Uh, kind of giving that punk twist, which mm -hmm. is adding the, the authenticity, the meaning, the context of, uh, of STEAM. And, um, and then creating, having the kids actually go to Brimfield, right? Mm -hmm. uh, get objects based on some sort of theme, bring it back to Palmer, and then uh, have a design challenge. And we we're already starting to work with some of the students at Pathfinder. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, the oh. electronics students. Uh, we actually just had uh, the electronics teacher come out yesterday, uh, Frank Legassi. I yes. don't know if you know Frank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's actually going to be here in a, a little bit. He's helping us doing some uh, electronics work. So, oh my God. So it's it's really kind of uh, it's special because all of the the people that can make this happen are here already. Mm -hmm. We just kind of, you know, I see myself kind of as the connector, bringing all these pieces together and, uh, you know, helping Palmer with uh, regain its mojo. And that concludes our chat with Bruce Rosenbaum and about all of the exciting things he has going on right here in Palmer. If you'd like to get in touch with him, you can check out modvic.com or you might see him gearing up for his next exhibition right on Main Street in Thorndike.